Quick live here. I've got to cover. Jack Smith is not happy, folks. And this is really funny when you hear the reasons why he's not happy and how so much of what they're doing is working against them. Thanks for the comment there, Kit Kat. Yeah, please do smash that like and chat in with where you're from. Uh, I'm out in the lovely state of New Hampshire still. Uh, just wrapped up a great interview with uh, Trump's former campaign manager, still an advisor to the Trump campaign. Uh, Going to be an amazing interview. We spent 50 minutes with him. I'll probably break that up into a few uh, sections. And the interview got a little hot for YouTube world. I might have to post some of it on Rumble or Locals. Uh, and so make sure you're following me over there. But here, let's get into this news story really quickly. And before I do, I do want to mention my sponsor really quickly, MyPillow, MyPillow.com, promo code Lumberjack or MyPillow.com forward slash Lumberjack. Again, I want to thank you so much as an audience. You've been so supportive of Mike Lindell, the second biggest audience support. I'm second, and I shouldn't say second biggest because I don't have as big of an audience as Dan Bongino, but the second most supportive audience for Mike Lindell's products and what he's doing. So the slide sandals are still $9.50. The $25 Spectacular is still going on and free shipping as well. So uh, you can also call at 800-568-2865. That's my preferred way of ordering because then you can have them advise you on the process. So here we go. We got 454 of you on now. So let's get into the news. So this out of Newsweek, check this out. Jack Smith is not happy. He's not happy, and you're not even going to believe why he's not happy. This is what's so funny. Jack Smith is not happy with Trump's Stormy Daniels trial actions. And why isn't he happy? Because, people, what's going on is that that trial that Judge Mershon is requiring him to be at and miss his son's high school graduation and so on, saying you've got to be in the courtroom every single day while he's trying to run a campaign, okay, is interfering with Jack Smith's trial. And he's saying, listen to this, this is wild. So um, former President Donald Trump is using the Stormy Daniels trial to delay his classified documents case in Florida, prosecutor Jack Smith claimed. In his latest filing on Monday, Smith wrote that Trump has known for a long time about the Daniels case and is using it to request a new timetable in the Florida case. Well, Jack, baby, how is Trump supposed to be in two courtrooms at the same time, you moron? And so by, by pressing all these cases at the same time, they are creating their own calendar problem. So everything they do continues to work against them. I want you to have good hope. Furthermore, as I spoke with Trump's senior campaign advisor here just a little bit ago, he said, Neil, you need to understand Trump is going to do something that other people just don't understand because he works on Trump time. Things that take other people so long to do, he, he gets done so much quicker. So He's going to do his time in court, which is going to end at three. He's going to hop on a plane. He's going to get to another rally. And if you guys missed what he just did in the Bronx yesterday, where, you know, he basically showed up Alvin Bragg, who was unwilling to prosecute a real criminal, okay, and where they've got rampant crime, his political IQ, if it's on a scale of one to 100 right now, Trump is running at 100. It was beautiful. And then you're going to see him at Madison Square Gardens. That's going to happen. And it's going to happen because he's sitting there right in New York, and then he's just going to hop over to Madison Square Gardens at night, and he will continue to campaign so much. Actually, I think what's going to happen, this is my, I, I'm curious as to my audience, what you think, okay? And again, 839 of you on, 315 likes. Please hit that like button. Let's get this out to a few more people. But I think what's going to happen is it's going to work so hard against them that Trump is going to take the state of New York right out from underneath him, which is how many electoral votes? It's number two. I can't even remember the number. It's big, okay? Because they keep going after Texas, and now they're going to lose New York. And if you guys want some more good news... I just looked up the polling, and here's the polling now in Texas that the Dems constantly think they're going to take. Trump plus 12 in Texas right now. Trump plus 12. Biden doesn't stand a chance. Kennedy's pulling 9%. The Democrats are crying because they're losing votes to Kennedy because what young person wants to vote for Joe Biden, who's a senile old freak, okay? And I, I'm sorry I said freak, but I mean, really. I mean, he... You have to understand, he was a plagiarist. He ran for president how many times he never could win until they propped him up as the establishment candidate, okay? But, I mean, do you guys think that Trump has a chance to take New York? I'm curious. Sean Flanagan, thank you so much for that super chat. You know, hit a little heart. Bam, right there. Well, I can't on the thing. They're not letting me. I'm going to hit it over here on this. But um, they're not letting me. There. There. Now I can hit it 
right there. Thank you, Sean. Um, but uh, anyways, that's what's going on. Which it's, it's got Jack Smith in such a tizzy. And what's interesting is if you've seen anything with the jury selection, and I've been shooting this documentary out here in New Hampshire, people, and it's going to be amazing, okay? But I have not had time to look at the news as much as I normally do, but I have seen what's going on with the jury selection out there in Judge Mershon's courtroom, and it's a sham, okay? It's an absolute sham. These people's social media posts actually give away their positions, and yet they're supposed to act as impartial juries when they're Trump haters. It's just BS, okay? So, but I think as a result of this that he actually stands a chance of taking New York. So, I'm kind of excited about that. But I have a guest I want to bring on because we're going to be interviewing her in the documentary here in just a second. I got to slide that microphone out of the way and I got to turn my camera a little bit. But I want you guys to, I want to introduce you to Therese Basterash. That's right. You say that five times really fast. Basterash, you got it. <laughs> so I want I want to bring this to your listeners, and I, I don't know if you're faith based at all, but Proverbs twenty six twenty seven. Whoever digs a pit will fall into it. If someone rolls a stone, it was going to roll back onto them. Everything that's happening with Trump, every effort that they do to demolish him. Is backfiring. It is. It is so much fun it's to watch. Just, it's it hilarious. is so much fun to watch. Like, keep it's, going, guys, because you're just bringing us Americans from the bottom up to show up. Well, it's frustrating and funny at the same time yes. because you're thinking, yes. why are we going through this? Okay, right. it's it's costing us money, all these trials and everything, but it's almost like. Again, I hate to say this because I used to get so ticked off when people would say, "Oh, Neil, it had to be this way." But it almost did have to be this way to expose the truth of what's going on in America. And one of the great things about Trump, and I think what what he has done and what, you know, people are always like, you know, he needs to tame it down on social media. And I kind of think that at times, sometimes too, because, you know, I really liked Ronald Reagan. He was such a great communicator mm -hmm. and everything. But... It's almost like you had to just rip it off. You had to rip the Band-Aid off the country and show you just how bad it is. So, I don't know. But So, Therese is running for something called Executive Council. Now, interestingly enough, the weakest governor in the nation, not by, because actually John's, the Sununu Enterprise has actually created very much, a very strong position for themselves by surrounding themselves with sycophants. So I, but it's set up to be, it's set up to be the weakest governorship in the nation because there's something called the executive council, which is five people who basically, I mean, what is the max the governor can approve spending without the executive council? 5,000 or is so it 10,000? 10,000. It's 10,000. Yes. Okay. So anything over $10,000 has to go to the executive council for a majority vote for the state to spend that money. So all the state contracts. Go I'm going to have it. you move in but a little bit because you're not going to be even, heard as well. Even more importantly is all of the appointments. So all of our court system, our family court, our judges, anywhere where people, the AG, um, any appointments are also approved by this executive council. So collectively, these five individuals who hold the executive council seat have more power than the governor. You know, I was actually in the executive council's uh, chambers, chambers yesterday. Yes, yeah. and we were we were filming in there a little bit. So yeah. this is all part of our whole documentary process. But it's it's, it's a very pretty room. I like it. You know, it's just how it's right. set up and everything. But I started my journey um, as a foster mom. I'm a nurse. Um, I'm a mama bear. Stood up for the masking with the children during remote and COVID. And I think what Trump is doing is he's bringing all of us grassroots to engage in civic duty. And in my journey, I'm six miles from the Capitol going down there realizing who the executive council is because we, we were ignorant as voters. We didn't even know what their role was. And they often were elected unopposed. So, you know, now we're in the game. And my message to all of your viewers is run for office. Take every possible seat you can, whether I'm trustee of the trust in my town, whether it's library trustee, whether it's a school board member, where it's state rep, take every seat back, you guys. We've got to make America great. This is not a one-man show. We love Trump, but we've got to take every seat we possibly can and do not limit yourself or put yourself into a box that you can't go do these jobs because you can. Anyone with a good, you know, head on their shoulders who's tracking to the Constitution can get in there and say, no, this is this needs to be nullified. This needs to be screened back. What are we doing here? Why are we going out of state for this contract? Why are we doing an in-state contract so we can put food on the table for our own tradesmen? 
you get in the game. If I can do it, you can do it. So um, just excited as everyone else is to see this is an exciting time to be in history. I know it can be a scary time for a lot of people, but I think we need to flip it and understand that it is bringing us all up into the table. And this has got to be from the bottom up that we take our country back. It does, because I'm going to give you guys an example of just how bad it is out there. And I want to acknowledge another super chat here really quickly. Charles Jansen said, mm -hmm. Democrats and MSN have used classical conditioning to make us hate Trump. If we stop listening to them and start listening to Trump, we'll find he's a likable guy. And that is very true. Yeah. Now, um, I, I want to give you, before I get into this other, because this is I, there's a story. I, I got to get to this. But I want to share with you uh, Teresa's handle on X, okay? And it's Therese, and that's T-E-R-E-S-E for N-H, okay? So it's at Therese for N-H. That's her handle on X. Mine is down below in the description, and I'm going to put hers into the comment right now for you. Uh, but uh, so it's at Therese for N-H. That's it right there. So go follow her on X, Okay. She needs to build some support, some grassroots movement here, because that executive council seat is very, very powerful, okay? So make sure you do that, and I will share my, in fact, I should uh, open up X. Can I say something real quick? Yeah, totally. You so um, I got involved during the COVID mandates for clinicians and for healthcare workers, and that catapulted me into the front um, of a grassroots group here in New Hampshire. So more importantly, I'm not a big Twitter, uh, social media person, but the group is. So if you could come and check out the group, it's at NH Peeps, P-E-E-P-S, at NH Peeps. I'm more known for that. And if you're on Facebook, it's We the People NH, We the People NH. Um, those are where the grassroots here in New Hampshire were doing a lot of crazy things that have been extremely effective. We would love for you to recycle it wherever you are located within the United States. Um, we do text brigades where we, all of a sudden a hundred of us will text a legislator at the same time on a piece of legislation. We're supporting each other. We're doing county groups. We're just growing ourselves up from the bottom up. So take a look at what we're doing and recycle it where you are because it is effective and it is working. In my town, we we raised up seven candidates for open seats and we had a group of patriots. We got all seven of those individuals elected this last April. So um, come together, link arms for liberty and go get it done, guys. You can do it. It just takes a little organization. I'm not finding you on X here. Um, it's the number four. Oh, the number four. Yeah, so okay, people. So I, I put it wrong in the uh, chat. It's the number four. To re okay, so here we go. I'm going to actually do something for you. I'm going to just... I'm going to repost this right now. So if you go to my Twitter handle, which many of you have already, just at Neil E. Johnson if you don't have it, and it's down below in the description. Um, I just retweeted her, so it'll be my last repost, and then you can follow her back, okay? But uh, one of the things you talked about, taking from the grassroots, you guys want to hear something really crazy and show you just how bad it is out there and why we need to take things back mm -hmm. at the city council, the school boards, the everything. In the town of Livingston, Montana, just yesterday, we are talking as red as red can be. I've been to Livingston. I hunt elk and drive right through Livingston, Montana. We're talking a town of 500 people. Guess what they are now having? A pride parade and a drag show drag for kids. Story, drag show for kids and a pride parade in Livingston, freaking Montana, people. Do you guys understand just how bad that is? I mean, we're, we are talking where these lib hicks, we're going to call them, you know, are totally outnumbered by conservatives, and yet they are getting this through. And in fact, the city council further went on to issue a proclamation that said if anybody opposes this, they're basically haters and, yes. you know, everything, yes. every bad thing that the, the stupid media tries to call us, that's what they're going to do. They're going to call you names. Okay, in Livingston, Montana. And that obviously means, and this is the big point, people, that not everybody who tells you they're a Republican is a Republican. Okay, this goes all the way back, and many of you know this story. I ran it out of Georgia, but basically they are running Democrats as Republicans yes. in the state of Georgia through Landmark Communications, which is a political consulting firm, and that's what they're doing. Okay, so I have it on good authority from you from Ken Murray and or for Tom from Tom Murray and Ken Iring out here in New Hampshire, guys that I know and trust 
that Teresa is the real deal. Yes. I, you know, there's so much that I've learned in my journey here, you guys. Um, one, first and foremost, I'm sure what's happening in New Hampshire is happening across the United States. But what we've discovered here is 70% of our property taxes are going to the SAUs, the school districts. We have had now three school districts in the state of New Hampshire who have lost millions and millions of dollars and have n no way to account for where that money went. Um, Nashua, $8 million. My school district, over $2 million. So you have these school board members. <laughs> But the problem is, you guys, only one out of 10 of us shows up for our town and school board votes. So we are not outnumbered. We are America. We are the majority. However, we are completely outorganized. We We've are. We've got to show up. We, I, I truly believe turnout will trump tyranny. So even though the election Trump tyranny. You are so good. You know I mean, that? that's, that's, that's I good. I came up with that doing my horse stall. So <laughs> I always come up with the best phrases out with muck and stall. So, um, tyr you know, turnout will trump the tyranny. So if I told my town, okay, we have one out of ten that show up for historically for town elections. We did a letter out to every registered Republican saying, hey, we're the grassroots conservatives. This is our pick for the town elections, please show up because historically only one out of 10 of us show up. If just two out of 10 of us show up, we'll have double the numbers and we'll have a clean sweep. That is exactly what happened. But could you imagine if we had nine out of 10 of us show up? It, it changed everything. It's a and total I, game changer. This is, they oh. cannot outdo us if we actually show up. Yeah. And we've got to run for office. We've got to say, you know what? I. I'm doing it. I'm getting in there. I'm going every two weeks to watch the meeting, the executive council. I'm educating myself. I've got the support. And you know what? You just got to say, you know what? God is going to do a thing, but we are his hands and feet. We have got to be the ones to show up. Yeah. It's not going to happen. Freedom will not come by osmosis, you guys. Amen. And just supporting Trump is not enough because they've infiltrated nope. every single layer of our government every, every single layer so if we got to take it back we've got to be trumpeteers is what i say you know go run for office wherever you are if nothing else there's simple website searches where you can put in your your address and your zip code and know who your legislators are start right now figuring out who is representing me are they friend are they foe are they establishment are they really a republican how are they voting how are they standing up for us and go have coffee with them you can do that can and do as well this. especially in new hampshire right. people it's the largest governing body in the country it's the largest legislature in the whole nation it's bigger than the us house of representatives how many people on average does a does a state rep from New Hampshire? It's like four thousand like or something. Three to four thousand. And mean, I know this is overwhelming. I know a lot of you watching don't even have time to turn your laundry around, put your dishes away. You're running from job to job. You're just trying to keep your head above water. So, we try and do five minute action items on Sunday with our group. But the big thing was if you can just find five people in your town that are like minded conservatives, you can move mountains because those five people can find five people. And if you get an army of fifty people showing up to your selectman meeting. You're all of a sudden going to take back your town. And, and then what was from that? there, you can grow and grow and grow. I was at the Selectman meeting last night with my town. Yes. Oh, my goodness. They're picking on small tradesmen and saying, oh, you're not zoned to have your, your plumbing truck in your driveway. Uh, but see, they're cherry-picking who this, they pick on. Of course they are, because they, they won't pick on the people that are supporting them. Right. This And this is so it's, a people. I am, every level, we have got to get... Yeah. As I'm filming this documentary out here and we are seeing what's going on in New Hampshire, it is absolutely wild, people. I need to get your t Twitter handle for that group again. What it's was? NH New Hampshire. NH Peeps. P E E P S. That's it. Yeah. At NH Peeps. Okay. So, especially if you are in New Hampshire, follow at NH Peeps so you can get these action items and take action. Okay. Another thing, really quickly, I got to get to this other super chat from Sean Flanagan. But all the polls don't measure the invaders' votes. Wine. Why won't anybody listen? Okay, Sean, you have got to. I, I, I did this interview. I'm telling I will get that up. Uh, just phenomenal interview that, that we did here just in the last two hours. Uh, I did it as a record. I've got to divvy it up into a few pieces. It's almost an hour. I want to gain some maximum exposure to that piece. Had to create a thumbnail and all of that. But again, talking with one of Trump's senior campaign advisors, there is 
a plan in place here, okay? I, you need to understand what's what's taking place. I, I, I talked about Charlie Spees the other day too. We talked specifically with him about that. You're gonna wanna hear what he had to say, okay? So make sure you're watching, make sure you're subscribed, make sure your notifications are on uh, because all of these things are gonna be vitally important, okay? Can I but, say one more thing yes. on that? So a lot of the followers that follow me say, Therese, it's, it's too corrupt, they're gonna cheat, it doesn't matter. That's what they want. They want us to disengage and not show up to vote because we think it's a lost cause. You need to double down the other direction. And not only do we need to show up, we need to show up five times bigger than we've ever shown up before. So don't play into the psychology of with all the immigration, with all of the corruption, that you know our votes aren't going to matter and why even bother showing up to the polls or running for office. Don't worry about outcome. Doing the right thing is always the right thing. So we just need to keep on, we need to stay focused Trump is still showing up. He's still campaigning. Truth. He's still in the game. He's still running hard. That man is running so hard. As a clinician watching him, I'm like, I hope he's hydrating. I hope he's sleeping. All of these things. We need to be praying for him. But we all need to run just as hard. It is not a time to say, oh, it's too you know, corrupt for me to participate. Don't feed into that psych op. That's what they want us to do. Don't do it. Stop talking about it's too corrupt for it to happen. An unintended consequence of us being truthers about the corruption with our elections is it's causing this wave of people, you know, throwing their hands up and giving up. So we yeah. don't want that. We want to talk about what's going on for corruption, but we don't want you to feed into this um, mental, uh, you know, paradigm of why bother participating. We need to participate more than ever. Now. Another thing really quickly here, folks. Um, I see a lot of you saying, I don't get notifications. I see this all the time, okay? So I am sharing right now uh, my locals handle, okay? You don't have to pay to be a part of my locals, okay? But go over there and sign up because what you do is you enter your email and I can send out, I can manually send out notifications, which I do for live streams or important stories. I don't send it out for every video, but if I'm gonna go live, you will get a notification. Okay, uh, if you are signed up on Locals and you'll get it through your email, all right? So uh, that's, uh, that's going on. So I'm just gonna share that again, okay? So follow me on Locals. Also, um, I've gotta d dice up that interview, that last one I did, and some of it was a little too hot for, for YouTube. So I'm gonna probably post that up on Locals and you're gonna wanna see it because you're thinking, how are we gonna overcome this corruption and all this? I'm telling you, that interview is gonna be worth your time. So make sure uh, that uh, that you subscribe over there. Again, it doesn't cost you anything. You just have to enter your email address. That's so I can send you those emails, all right? So I wanna thank you so much for listening. I've got to interview Therese now for this documentary. Uh, but uh, again, if you're new, please subscribe. Go check out my sponsor, MyPillow, MyPillow.com, promo code Lumberjack. Big savings, the $9.50 slide sandals are still there, people. I mean, like buy them for Christmas gifts ahead of time because you will never see that deal again, okay? They've got the, the gel insert and everything. And then all those $25 spectaculars are still going on and you can get free shipping on qualifying orders too, all right? So again, I'll share the locals link one more time. All you do is go over there and uh, just subscribe. No big deal. You don't have to pay any money. You can bypass that. I'm not asking for your money. If you want to, you know, support through local, it's fine. If you don't, that's fine. I just want you to be able to get the notifications. All right. And, uh, and also some special things that I cannot put up over here. All right. We'll see you on the next episode. Peace out.